great big good morning to all of you this morning. Welcome to a few minutes of devotional time with Miss Ann and myself, David Johnson. We're here at a mighty cold location of Wilkes County where the temperature got down pretty close to single digits last night, I think. I, I don't know if we've got the final tally on that or not, Miss Annie, but it was close to just one set of degrees, I do believe. <clears throat> but thank God here in the little studio, we've still got a log to burn on the fire and the warmth of Jesus in our hearts. And we want to share that Jesus part with you this morning so you can warm up from the inside out. Now, we're going to be talking about stuff today. And if you're following Miss Ann on Facebook these days, you've probably seen where we're in the process of remodeling our home in Perlier over there close to the church as we prepare to move back there from where we've been the last several years helping to see to her dad and mom, both of who have gone on to be with the Lord. And as in all moves, we've had to look after and sort through all of the stuff, our stuff, their stuff, everybody's stuff. But first, we want to tell you about some more stuff that's more important than that. We want you to hang around to our Facebook channel of Arbor Grove Methodist Church at 10 o'clock this morning, and you can go to church with us, even if you're sitting right there on your phone or uh, on your computer if you can't be there in person. Pastor Susie's preaching from Jonah chapter 3 this morning and talking about how God keeps calling back. That sounds mighty interesting to me. Cousin Eric and me are going to try to provide a little string music during the service, and Lois Doss will be playing the piano for some congregational singing that we invite you to join in with as well, right where you're at. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, so we're going to be found doing that at the arbor, and uh, we wish you to be along for the ride at 10 o'clock. Also, in addition, if you happen to be in the area this Thursday night, we have our first Arbor Music Night of the year where lots of our friends come and join the Arbor Grove House Band and share some music in the Fellowship Hall. Lots of gospel and hymns along with some country tunes, a few bluegrass songs as well. The event, of course, is free. We don't charge you to get into that. Uh, want you to come be with us. But if you do come hungry at 5 o'clock, ain't it 5 o'clock when they start selling hot dogs, Miss Annie? Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking is 5. At 5 o'clock, uh, the folks in the kitchen is going to be serving those famous Arbor Grove hot dogs. And the proceeds from the sale of those, they are for sale, will go to the Arbor Grove Men's Club. And they those proceeds help sponsor young folks that need a little help at Christmas time in particular. And this past season, your hot dog contributions helped to sponsor 52 young people at Christmas. And I'm just proud of every one of you. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless you from the bottom of our hearts. The hot dogs go on sale at 5 and the music runs from 7 till about 9 p.m. That's this Thursday night, January 25th, Arbor Music. Wow. That's a lot of stuff, ain't it? Now, you know, I, I believe I remember the comedian, George Carlin, for those of you that used to see him, doing a comedy bit years ago about having too much stuff. And uh, almost everybody, from the poorest to the richest and the youngest to the oldest, has some stuff of some kind that they treasure. Now, some stuff is really necessary to live. You need water, you need food, and on nights like the past two or three here in Wilkes County, you better have either a roof over you or at least something to wrap up with. It's just been surpassing cold. But our problem comes with surplus stuff. Too much stuff sometimes. Stuff that we think that we might need sometime, but just not right now. It can be little or it can be much. But we have to store it somewhere if it's too much to carry around with us. And that's where the decision-making process starts. And that's where the questions begin. Do I really need this? How important is it? Is it something that someone else needs worse than I do? And I'll tell you, when you start moving from one place to another, it don't matter if you're moving from under a bridge to another bridge. You're going to start asking questions like that. 
And uh, we've had a lot of those questions here lately, moving back to our original home in Perlier. Well, in the middle of these type thoughts, Jesus once left us with a piece of scripture. I'm sure you've probably heard it before, and it might put our questions and our concerns into context. First, let's look at the scripture. I always want to do that part first. This is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. He said, Lay up not for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now like I said, Ann and I are moving from her parents' home, and we've been here for over nine years. We're moving back to the home that uh, she and I built in Perlier when we first got married 46 years ago. And we're happy as we can be about that. We've missed it. The situation is we had moved some of our belongings, some of our belongings, over here, which is about 20 minutes away from our original home, so we could live as comfortably as possible here. Well, it's time to move back. So our stuff has to go with us. And also, her parents had their stuff uh, that they had accumulated in 60 years of their own married life. And then her two sisters and her brother had some stuff here that had been here ever since they were kids. And since this house is now to be sold, they, the, all the family wants to go ahead and sell it, uh, we're moving uh, the stuff from this house out. She and her sisters and brother have divided the things that are special to each one of them they want to keep, but there's still more stuff, you know? Not to mention the fact that Ann and I are paying for a storage facility over in Miller's Creek for some of our other stuff that came out of my father's house when he died and my grandpa's house when he died, and there's a bunch of stuff. Now, there comes a time when you have to decide. Why am I keeping these things? Am I keeping them for investments? I don't think so. Who's going to pay a lot of money in the future for a bunch of family pictures that only the two of us could identify the people in them? What kind of investment is a particular shelf that was just nailed together for some use for a month or two uh, by one of our dads or grandpas, as special as it might be, if it won't fit anywhere in our living space, uh, won't fit in any corner of our house, and our people that build it have already gone on to be with the Lord, they could care less about that shelf. Things like that. My point is this, if, if I kept every scrap of possessions that my folks, Ann's folks, and the Lord knows whose folks had ever left us, we wouldn't have room to sit down in our own house if we ever got to move back there. So we've done mass giveaways and sold a few things, still giving some stuff away, and uh, cut down on our load tremendously. And here's the most important part. A person that's trying to follow God, a person that is or has turned their life over to Christ, is confronted with these same decisions in a spiritual sense, you know that? Here's some questions to ask yourself daily about your load of stuff that you carry in your heart. The things that you entertain your mind with. The things that, that uh, you put yourself before. The television screen, the phone, the computer, the movie screen, uh, the books. Whatever it is you invest your time with. Ask yourself these questions. How much time have I spent praying this day or this week? And if I prayed, how much time have I spent listening for God in my heart? You know, we talk to him a lot sometimes. We ask him for a lot of things, but how often do we forget to be patient and just hush and listen? Next thing to ask yourself is, how much time did I spend reading his word today or this week? How can we possibly learn about being equipped as a child of God for the things that come 
situations that come to us without reading the owner's manual. My cousin Greg, he's a uh, Sunday school teacher and a Sunday school superintendent, and that's his favorite saying. You got to read the owner's manual. How much have you read the owner's manual today? Here's another one. How much time did I spend, this is important now, how much time did I spend watching for opportunities not only to tell somebody about Jesus, but to show them Jesus by our actions. By being concerned about their needs, uh, other people besides ourselves, you know. These times come to us in some funny places. You might get a chance to witness in a grocery checkout line while you're complaining about the price of groceries. You might get a chance to witness in the workplace, having understanding with a co-worker, uh, maybe when things haven't gone exactly right. Maybe in the gatherings of friends, if some of you get together, go over to the fast food place for a biscuit in the morning or something. There's places you can show Jesus in your life and sometimes you're afforded the opportunity to do that. Uh, you have to be uh, ready to do that. It can happen even in a homeless camp, and it has. You don't have to be rich or be in a great palace hall to show the effect of Jesus in your life. You just got to be ready to share something as simple, the Bible says, as a cup of water in his name or a piece of food with somebody that doesn't have any. You know, I've got many treasures of things that remind me of my kin folks. Most of them are, to most people, would just be trinkets or something that they made uh, with their hands. We've, we've kept uh, several quilts that our moms or grandmothers have made. Uh, Miss Ann's kept a rocking chair that she'll still use uh, from time to time, rocking one of our great-grandchildren, uh, our god-grandchildren. Uh, with occasionally things like that they can be a comfort to you when you miss somebody that's gone on to heaven but folks at the end of the day we're not going to be here long and Miss Annie been here a whole lot longer than we're going to be here and every possession that we have will stay here when we pass away to go on to the next life our greatest possession yours and ours is Jesus Christ and he is the only eternal thing that we will still have after this life. His gift of eternal life is secured by his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead and he offers it to us simply by us repenting of our sins, turning ourselves around, turning around the way we think and turning our lives over to Him. Repent and turn your life over to Him. Ask Him to come into your life. It's as simple as a prayer. And the best thing about it is that when we do that, it's amazing how little stuff it takes for life here in this life to be satisfied. Because when you have Jesus in your heart, friends, you have everything. Everything you will need forever. Amen. I hope something of that warms you up this morning. Here's an old song I used to hear Jimmy Swaggart and a bunch of other fellers do in the gospel business. I had nothing but heartache and trouble. I was seeking for fortune and fame. I had nothing but doubts and confusion. But now I have everything. I was making big plans for my future. Everything I have everything
saved me and gave me life eternal. And now I have everything. Yes, now I have everything. Folks, you take Jesus and you'll have everything. Now watch out for his stuff. Don't get too much of it piled up, okay? Hope to see you next week.